Uh, here are a few words about abortion, even though I'm a man. Um, and tradition says that I don't have a voice in this debate because one sex shouldn't have body rights over another, which is fine, I accept that. Um, but half of terminations are male. So one sex does have body rights over another, the right to kill. A female can destroy unborn males and can destroy unborn females as well. So it's not really about sex, it's about uh, a human's right to kill another human. And I say kill because uh, euphemisms abound in this debate, which is really about eugenics. Uh, we're talking about the uh, destruction of children uh, who are inconvenient or, or, or who may um, drain our resources or the resources of the community. That is eugenics. Uh, and so we use soft language. We use uh, French or Latin based words rather than German based words. Uh, we say terminate, not kill. We say abort, not murder. And we say fetus and embryo, not baby or human. Uh, because after all, it's only a potential human. Uh, but that seems a bit harsh. If we have a license to bump off any human that hasn't reached its potential, then uh, that's the end of the X factor. Uh, but it could be the end of me as well. I haven't passed my grade 8 piano. Uh, so should that be a death sentence? Well, obviously I'm an adult, so that seems outrageous, but to kill a baby in the womb is a lot less outrageous. And this moral confusion is the source of the euphemisms. And the confusion is best demonstrated in the hardest case of all, uh, in the case of rape, where you have um, a criminal, the rapist, and you have a victim, the mother, and a second victim, the baby. Uh, and our verdict is that uh, the mother survives and the rapist survives, and the baby is executed. And the rapist uh, doesn't get the death penalty because we adhere to the notion of the sanctity of life. But that doesn't apply to the baby. And that's the moral confusion again. Uh, and we say, well, we can kill the baby because it, it's not the mother's fault. So it's not her problem. Uh, but things that aren't our fault are our problem. With pollution, we understand that. Other people pollute, but we recycle. Uh, and the baby of the raped woman it's not her fault, but it is her problem. It is her responsibility. Uh, like, for example, uh, my car skids off some ice and I knock down an old guy. Now, if I drive away and leave him dying, then he is um, my responsibility. What happens to him next is my responsibility. The ice isn't my fault, but the old guy lying injured is my problem. Um, or if I'm in a playground and an armed gang are fighting and they run away leaving a loaded gun by the swings, that's not my fault, but it is my problem, it's my responsibility to deal with a loaded gun. So that's the same with rape. The mother didn't cause the baby, but her responsibility for the baby is part of the crime, it's part of the injury that was done to her. And uh, our confused way of solving this problem, this conundrum, is to kill the baby and to spare its criminal creator. Rape is spared, child destroyed. And our rationale for this is that it offers trauma relief for the mother. But trauma relief might come from another source. It might come from the rapist. Imagine if the rapist had to work uh, with all his earnings going to support the child he had created for decades until it reached adulthood. That is trauma relief uh, without a downside. And there will be an upside. Men seeing convicted rapists working for decades to compensate their victims, that would affect the rape statistics. I think rapists would find uh, masturbation was suddenly a noble calling. Um, but as it is, we are bought, we uh, kill babies in the womb. And I think we do that because they're not noticed. Uh, they don't have friends or siblings or colleagues. Uh, they don't come to dinner, they don't admire our new extension, and they don't invite us to parties or to weddings. And they're not missed, they don't have a social life. But if we kill anyone who doesn't have a social life, then uh, that's the end of tramps and loners and people with autism. It could be the end of me. That's why I worry. Um, and finally, um, here's a happy uh, story about abortion. Um, rich guy in America, uh, adopted, finally finds his birth mother and says thank you. And the birth mother is astonished and relieved. And she says, why, why do you say thank you? I gave you away when I was 23, I couldn't cope. And he says, well, thank you for letting me be me and not be an abortion. Uh, and that guy's name was Steve Jobs. <laughs>